Devon and Hell. I'm going to this go to Hell. Oh, that's shocking, huh? Matthew, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. As we already discussed in previous lessons, there's no this thing of like a lot of religions believe that you're going to be crushed and the unrighteous is just going to disappear. No. As we're going to live forever with Christ, the unrighteous is going to live forever in hell. That is biblical. It's not a thing that you can change, as we looked at last week about uh, to the verses, especially saying that. That is a real thing. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is the right said already in Daniel. It said. It's not, it's not a history or a story or a myth or something. Which is the manifest token by the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeking it is righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. For everlasting destruction from the power of Christ. They will not have a chance, second chance to come back to Christ. That is also a story that's running around by some uh, religions that you're going to die and you're going to have a second chance because Christ is coming and then they will uh, rule for thousand years and you, yes, you're going to have a second chance. No. If you did not go to God on this earth, uh, currently, or accept Christ, you're not going to have a second chance. No way in the Bible is said that you're going to have a second chance because it would have been clear. If that was possible, now why are we struggling then now to believe if we're going to have a second chance? Then I can just do what I want to because the next time I will go for a, a, for a better time. And that is exactly what the people in today's life, oh no, I'm still young, I can do what I want to, but they don't realize that tomorrow I can be dead because of a car accident or anything. It can be anything. There's no such thing. You go now to Christ to be saved. Never even later. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offer, and them which do iniquity, in equity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. They shall be wailing and nursing a nation of teeth. It's an everlasting, that's the word, into a furnace of Fire. And just above it, not this long as the right above it, everlasting contempt. So it's everlasting fire. It's not only for a few years and then you're going to be crashed. No, it's for everlasting. We are living in Christ today to be in an everlasting relationship with Christ here on earth and after life. We will be there forever, having the pleasure to meet Christ and His Father in. If, as we say in a human language, in person, but it would be great to have that peace with us all the time. Then shall he say unto, uh, also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. There's the there's said, everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. And what did they do? Remember that uh, the devil, they said, will come like a light. So be careful. Know your Bible because Satan can come like things in the light, like Jesus' light in the darkness. Be careful for that. And if I put off and, uh, offend it, cut it off. If there's something wrong, cut it off. Get rid of it. If you got an addiction, get rid of it. Go for counseling. If you come to God, there will be a way to get rid of it. There will be a rehab, a rehab to get rid of it. There will be help. God will open it and you will be healed because God said He promised us in Him anything is possible. It's not the fact that it's not possible. It is better for thee to enter halt into life that having nothing to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall quenched. Where they wound death, a wound death not, and the fire is not quenched, and in thine eye of offend thee. Plug it out, it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to cast into hellfire. What they were, death not, and the fire is not quenched. 
that's exactly saying the same thing just in another way. That is not a, uh, yeah, because it's not physical pluck your eye out. It is actually, if there's something bothering you, like as I said, addiction, like just before, or something that is causing you to sin, get rid of it. Get rid of it. That is actually what's, what's happening. You're not going to pluck, because that is where uh, you must be careful when it's a physical thing, when it's, uh, uh, you know, a little, when it's physical and figurative. And figurative. Yeah. Be careful for that. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and set Abraham afar off, and last him in the bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and sent Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this plague, and beside all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, they will come from hence. With other, that will come from, uh, with other words again, that is saying there is also a second chance, a second chance. It's clearly said to us, you cannot, when it's here, when you die, you all in the right or in the wrong, you cannot breach it. That is biblical. Again, it is proving that there isn't a second chance. See, what is, what's the facts that we look, look at in this passage? Number one, unbelievers will have punishment forever. That is very clear. They will be separated from God forever. There's not a second chance. They will be crying and grinding of teeth. I don't want to be there. Thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> it is a place of fire, the hell. It is not just a place of difficult living. It is fire. That is fire. Because judgment in Christ and God, right through the Bible, from Genesis right through to Revelation, the judgment is by fire. If God gives fire judgment, it is to punish you and to make you pure. Okay? Hell was made ready for the devil and his angels, but not for me, but because of unrepentance and they will suffer the same punishment as the devil and his angels. Therefore, we ask constantly for the Holy Spirit to refill us right through the day. Not only once when I go to sleep tonight or once a week when I go to church. Right through the day. That is the way you, you pray and you've got communication with Christ right through the day. The refillment of the Holy Spirit constantly. You don't just once get the Spirit and everything is, uh, how they say, hunky dory. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You grow as the Spirit refill and shows you all the ways and the different ways it's going and how you get wisdom. We spoke about it. This is the second death the scripture speaks of. The second death. If you get that, he speaks of the second death, that death is the everlasting hell. That's the second death. The first death is when you physically die here, and then if you go to hell, there's a second death. You cannot return. That's the ever, everlasting hell. That's the second. This is the hell is also called Hades. Now the word Hades got a specific meaning because in the Old Testament I also call the word Hades because Jesus didn't come to the first resurrection as given in Matthew 27 if I got it right with my head, um, didn't happen yet. Christ didn't, uh, 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 was, didn't pass, crucified, buried, and he didn't risen yet. So, that was Hades. Hades means a place of waiting. That's what the word Hades actually means. A place of waiting. Hell is a place of great pain and the judgment of Jesus do not change. Okay. Believers will go to heaven. The Lord is not slacking concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us were, were us world, not willing that stars should perish, any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's real and Jesus' real wish. Uh, you know, that is a very flat word to use, but I think all of us know what's the what it's a wish. In God's day, you want everybody to be saved. But unfortunately, we've got the people that is not for God and it's going to go against God. It's going to go against what is really true. And what is. And as we spoke, me and Fadi spoke just beforehand, the people will be led into blindness if they don't listen. And that's also biblical. Okay? 
Um, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. That is exactly where Jesus is. And he's going to judge us. The kingdom is given to Christ. God gave it to him. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may also be. Where are we going to be? With Christ. Not in another dimension, and Christ on another planet. Not, you know, Christ and His Father sitting on another planet, and we are totally in another place. No. We're going to be together. We're going to worship together. God the Father. We will see Christ. We will be there with the palace is going to be in the, like in the Revelation. God's going to have a new temple prepared for you of all the stones and it's going to be beautiful. If you go and have a look at what is happening. And we're going to worship the God, God the Father like we are supposed to do. So that is what we're walking into Christ's footsteps. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. So, what does that mean? The question is a lot of times, yes, but that person was saved and he gave his life to Christ and everything, and now he's totally antichrist and he's actually a, satan a satanic worshipper. What does that tell us? He was never saved in the first place. He was never saved in the first place. Thank you. He was never saved. He was never really a person of Christ, because Jesus also said to us, nobody will pull you from my arms. No. My, nobody. So that one said in the first place, he wasn't saved. And that is what's happening in a lot of, of our Christians. Yeah, I'm saved and I'm in church and everything. That's not going to help. If you do not have a relationship and you do not have the faith in Christ, and you open up for Christ and going to work through you, that faith is false. For we know that if our earthly house is of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Isn't that fantastic? It's not built with our stones and stuff. It's better. It's better. Now you know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but not uh, deceive, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. That word I did I discuss it last week with you? What does that word yeah, actually mean? Who can remember what that word means? No abuses or any self of mankind. What is that word? Uh, uh, what does that mean? Homosexual. That is specifically focused homosexuals. Go and uh, see what that word means. That is specifically said. No they, no abuses of themselves will was meant. With other words, they will not be saved. That is not my words. That is written in the Bible. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He washed us in the blood. He made a covenant with us. He made a blood covenant with us. And what is his is ours, and what is ours is his. So this is a quite a serious thing if you decide to walk with God, with Christ. It's not so much just the upper flock of the thing as they say it now. It is a serious thing. You made a covenant. And when you touch him, you touch me, and if you touch me, you touch him. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. But you are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the unnumerable company of angels, the heavenly Jerusalem. He said there, the heavenly Jerusalem. What about our earthly Jerusalem we've got? How does that put into the picture? How do you put that into the picture? Who can, who can tell me? How do you put the heavenly Jerusalem and today's earthly Jerusalem together? Why did, why did he say that? Like Mount Zion is also there, unto the sitting of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. How do you get that, the two together? Okay, if you go and have a look in Revelation, God 
city is going to come down with all its angels and it will be on uh, uh, Zion, uh, as Mount Zion in Jerusalem, in our earthly Jerusalem. Not the few no, planets no. away on earth. To reference that, I think it also says, for he will give us a new heaven and a new earth. Exactly. So and that is just a very, a very nice um, approach. Maybe I must go too deep into it. But you know, um, if you look at it, did you, do you know that the, the earth, um, but we call the aces, uh, us, the us, is shifting at the moment. So even with, uh, with the science, it is possible. Will be a new even new earth because you're going to look at it from another way. So that's just a, a quick thought. Philippians. For our conversation is in heaven. Conversation is in heaven. From which also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able, he, uh, he is uh, able even to. Subdue all things unto himself. We're going to be subdued to Christ, but we are going to have, like him, a glorious body when we, when we get risen or when he comes and he, he's taking us up into his palace. Hmm. What's the palace between a palace? What's the, just the interest? What's the difference between a palace and a castle? Quite thought. I I look at it. Okay, just think about it. I said, but it's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. Okay. Into his kingdom. So we keep into his kingdom. But there's a there's a difference between palace and castle. Quite interesting. Just go and look it up. Then Christ, who is our light, shall appear. Then shall he also appear with him in glory. God does not want us to go to hell. For all of us. But what, what's happening? We are free of choice, so we are choosing going the wrong way. It's our choice, it's not God. It's never God. He will never lead you to any temptation. He will allow Satan to lead you, but you got the free choice. Remember, there's no evil in God. Nothing. So it's not God's plan, it's your own. Because you actually listen to Satan. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. The thing is, we answering, you know, deciding. Therefore, he sent Jesus for our sin. God loves us, that we know. He loves us so much. He sent his son to help us, to make it possible for us to go to heaven, like, like the Jewish nation had. When Jesus' work was finished on earth, he ascended into heaven. We know that he told. He follows where he is going. He said that he is coming to, he is going to prepare a place for them. So, yeah. So, who is it? Us. He went to prepare a place for us. That was 2,000 years ago. And he knew we're still coming. We didn't even know. If our parents didn't even know we're going to live. I mean, that was how many years ago? <laughs> he already went to prepare a place for us. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not uh, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, and that the building of God and house not made with hands eternal to in heaven. Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but not to deceive, neither fortifications. Okay, that is just a um, abuses and the stuff that are going on, and from Jesus and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Again, we look at he was the first. I can't say person because he's more than a person. Uh, yeah, he was divine. Um, I don't know if there's such a descriptive word, but he was coming, going, and playing English. He was the first person that stood up from there, and he won. He showed the, the acceptance that God accepted his death for our sins, yeah. and he can open up to us again. Yeah. He can look at us again, but we look to us through Christ that is in us. Every man can go with the believers in Jesus. As his Savior, then you are freed from sin and become righteous through Jesus. Jesus said, 
We must think of things in heaven, hope and joy. Oh, that is, I've got a lot of hope, because I know it's true. I've got a lot of hope, and therefore I have joy. It doesn't matter how difficult our life is. We have joy, because that hope is true hope. It's really, and it's not false. We should not always think of the problems and the troubles we have on earth. When Jesus comes, we will share his glory, and therefore we, as Christians, have a wonderful hope. God will reward the faithful. Let's see. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together to God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. Every man work, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because if it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And we will be cleansed by fire. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive the reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. What does that mean? God, what, it sounds like a very contradictory thing. Because there he is saying that, uh, but himself shall be saved. He shall suffer loss by fire, and he will burn, and, but he will be saved. How does that work? Whatever is built upon God will withstand the fire. Will so withstand if your spirit is saved by God, it will withstand that fire. Yes, and everything that was wrong will, will be, will be burned yes. up. So if and your spirit is not in Christ, it's going to burn out. And burn and up. That, that's, that's my uh, interpretation. interpretation. That's how I see it. Because yes. It, it kind of explains that scripture. Okay, but if we, again, I think it's also revelation. Um, now, this is my own view. Please note this, mm -hmm. okay? This is not in the book. But if you also look at, look at revelation, there's also different crowns that will shine different. You know, your 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 red white that will shine different. So what I do interpret in this is that yes, if you will have according to your belief and your work works in Christ, not your your own prophet works, you will have that crown that will shine better. And because you also get different groups of angels into the day, God got different groups of angels, and I do believe. That's personally, that there will be different groups of um, your crown and your, you will shine because you will have glory. See, you will, you will be glory. Glory. So I think there will also, that is personally, I think it's not, you know, because there is different places saying that also. So mm -hmm. the, the, you will, the, the bad side will be off you, but you won't have such a shiny crown like, that is just a thought because otherwise this is not making sense. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if the the the, uh, the one that's closer to God's going to have a more shining crown because he's got less wrongdoings, if you can say it like that, than the other person. His Lord said unto me, Well done, good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. To the Jew first, and also to the Gentiles. Why to the Jew first? <laughs> no, the Jews was called, it was his nation, to the Jew first, and then us. So, don't be surprised if the Jews got the more shiny place than the you go. It's just a thought, right? Blessed are you when men shall revile you. And persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against your falsely for my sake. Rejoice, and that is happening quite a lot, saying things falsely against you. Rejoice, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you, they also had it. The apostles, everything were persecuted. Only John was not murdered. The pastors, all the other words. But call to remember the former days in which after you were eliminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Partly was ye were made the gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye become companions of them 
that were so used. For he has compassion of me in my bonds, and to joyfully dispose of your goods, knowing in yourself that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Hope, as I said, hope, going through difficult times, hold on to it. Cast thou away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense and reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And that promise he will never pull away. Like we promise so much things to other people, when a lot of times we don't do it. That promise is a promise. It's a real promise. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the head which die in the Lord from henceforth. Ye said the Spirit, and they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. That's a revelation. That is definitely with us. Isn't so? We are in that, uh, that time of revelation. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown, there, of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also the love is appearing. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory, and fadeth not away. We spoke about the crown, of the crown. And every man that stood with the mercy in temperate in all things, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. Behold, I can quickly hold that fast which thou hast, that you may take thy crown. Right, let's see at the points. What's there? God promises a reward to every Christian that is faithful. A Christian's reward does not come from other people. Oh, this soon, like if I'm, I'm a, a pastor at, this, uh, at a church and I'm getting all the nice rewards and gifts and everything for other people, it doesn't work like that. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Never money, but they also get. God gives each of us work to do in our home, neighborhood, and our job, and in our church. We are never without work. All around. The good works we do for other reasons and not for God will be burned up. For example, giving money to the church so that others can see us, there will be no reward. Sorry for that, people. Unfortunately, you're not going to get the reward. <laughs> this, I'm not nice. Eh? The first Christians suffered for their faith, but they did it gladly today the same. They suffered for their faith, not for things that they did, for their faith in Christ. Why was Christ crucified? Because he gave the truth. What is happening? Have faith. God's promises are for those who serve Him well. A prize of victory will be given. We will receive a glorious crown. Oh, and this crown will never lose its brightness. Therefore, do not lose hope and get discouraged because we do not get rewarded now. For our works on earth, God will reward us. He keeps His Promise. And that is very, very important. He gives his promise. God will make a new heaven and a new earth in the end. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Quite interesting. And brimstone. What came down on Sodom and Gomorrah? Fire and brimstone. Fire and brimstone. <laughs> Uh, I think there's a place also in Revelation where you see that the, uh, the area will be burned by brimstone. Where the beasts of the false prophets are, they shall be tormented day. Oh, it, I'm in your Revelation, sorry. That is in Revelation. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord can come any time, remember. In the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with Fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Everything shall be pure, purified, will be burned up. Be judged with fire, it will be burned up. Seeing then that all things, these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking forward and hosting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being of fire shall be dissolved. 
Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, where he dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that he look for such things, be delighted that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blindness. Yeah, blindness. Who was without spot and blind? Blindness of Jesus. When he was crucified, it was a lamb. As it was in the Old Testament, it was a goat. It was pure. I never see nothing wrong. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there were no more sea. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them. And be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Wonderful. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crime. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away, and I saw no temple there, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. They are the temple, they are in the temple, and the city had no need for the sun, none of the moon, but listen, this is very nice. To shine in it, the glory of God it did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light of it. Just think of it, where they move, there's light, or oh, you don't need the sun in it. Just think how fantastic it will be. And they shall in no wise enter into anything, it into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh about abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And the servant shall serve him, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle. Neither light of the sun, for the Lord give, uh, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. Blessed are they that do His commandments, not what we think we must do, not what somebody else tells us to do. God's commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life that was protected, <coughs> and may enter through the gates <coughs> of the city. He which Testify these things, said, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. We'll just quickly look at the main points there. God will destroy the earth that now exists. We will have a new earth in heaven. Our life should be holy and dedicated to God. He promised us a better heaven and earth, a new heaven and a new earth, better than we've got now. The revelation tells us about the, that which we are believers that are promised to us. God will live with man and again in the new heaven and earth. It will be fantastic, man. like it was on earth. He will be there but in glorified position. We will have fellowship with him like Adam and Eve had in the garden. God will walk with us on earth or where we stand. Heaven will be a place of eternal joy. The new Jerusalem is part of the new heaven and earth. It's the holy city. That area was called already in the Old Testament and will still be when God comes. It's his city, Jerusalem. God and Jesus will be the light of heaven. There will never be night or darkness, nothing sinful or evil in heaven. Heaven is a place of worship. We will worship God in all forms. But you know what is nice? If you think the angels are always sitting at present, they're always happy. If one believer comes to God, they sing and rejoice. It's fantastic. Yeah? Words cannot tell the glory of heaven, a place for the righteous. We as believers are sure of the joys of heaven and do not have the fear Jesus of Jesus. Jesus returned. We don't have the fear. We, we're waiting for it. We want it because we know we are saved. We know we're going to live with Him. Therefore, we can look forward to His coming and we can say, Come, Lord Jesus. You any time welcome. Please look at the main points heaven and earth. Unbelievers go to hell. Believers go to heaven. God will reward the faithful. He said He will reward the faithful. God will make a new heaven and a new earth. In the end. Isn't that something beautiful?